Hello everyone, welcome back to the Corridor Cast. Today's guest is Phil Wang from Wong Fu Productions. Now Wong Fu I would describe as if Corridor went into romantic comedies rather than action films, you get Wong Fu Productions. They've been around longer than we have. They've been creating stuff since before YouTube and there's a lot of wisdom it takes to do something like that. In fact, Phil's kind of become known as a bit of a an advice guru, uh, helping people out with their love lives and their regular lives. He's also opening a boba shop, out of all things. <laughs> He's a very interesting guy. Uh, also, a quick reminder for those of you who are interested in getting the Corridor GOT, G-O-G-E-O t-shirt, <laughs> and the iridescent sweatshirt, today as the day of this podcast going live, you have one day to get them. So a reminder for those of you who have been on the fence and want to pull that trigger. Jared's reminding me that I forgot to mention the URL, CorridorDigital.store, to buy the shirts. <laughs> All right, guys, let's sit back and relax and listen to these wonderful stories and words of advice from Phil Wang. Thanks for coming out on our podcast. For sure, man. Yeah. Let yeah. me know. <laughs> okay, so Wang Fu. Oh, we're going. We're going. We're going. Oh, it's wow. Going. We're, already, <laughs> we're already cut into this yeah, thing. Well, we're doing right. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, man, now it's so awkward. No, like, no. I made it brought it. Like, we're having such a flowing conversation. No, no, no. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Do you want to start, Nico? Well, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, Phil. I'm I'm curious, and I'm pretty sure a good majority of the people watching have no idea uh, who <laughs> I am. I'm not Freddie Wong. That was like a few episodes ago. <laughs> Jimmy I mean, will be on. Are, Jimmy will be on after you. Oh no, man! Just Wong, Wong, Wong. Like we're like <laughs> filming so many stereotypes that every Asian is probably just related to each other. Um, actually, no. I want to hear how would you describe us to your viewers. Uh, okay, here's how I describe. <laughs> yeah, okay, I actually had to do this like just 20 minutes ago before you came here. <laughs> Wong Fu is oh. Corridor Digital. If Corridor Digital was focused on like romantic comedy <laughs> and a lot more Asian centric, and that's that's Wong Fu to like to a T in my opinion. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> and you know what, Corridor Digital would be if Wong Fu wanted to do more VFX, heavy CGI, uh, action comedy. And it was a yeah. bunch of white guys. Yeah, it was a bunch of white guys. <laughs> um, no, I, I appreciate that. I think uh, you know nothing's stopping you from doing more romantic based. Uh, content that's yeah true. you know you know there's uh everyone loves to feel you know everyone watching right now has fallen in love and has been heartbroken i don't know maybe there's something there <laughs> <laughs> how did you like how did you get into focusing on romantic okay relationship based let me stories? let me clarify first of all if you actually go on our channel <laughs> we have twice as many comedies okay, okay? Um, the fact that our brand or identity has become like this romantic, emotional, whatever brand, that's actually more on the viewers. Really? Like, right? If you think about it, like if we actually have produced more just comedy, fun lifestyle stuff, but the stuff that sticks with them, that makes them think, oh, that's Wong Fu, that means that we struck something inside them that makes mm. them have an emotional connection to us. So they have that feeling that that's what they want to identify Wong Fu as, right? Um, so yes, we we try to balance it, but uh, I can't help it if like our number one video is a sixteen minute sad drama. I mean, it separate it separates the content from it the does. rest of the, yeah, and the I, ocean. Yeah, and I think that's what. So it was never like a conscious decision of like, oh, we need to find our niche. You know, I feel like these days, like a lot of YouTubers are like, oh, we got to find like our thing. Mm -hmm. It was literally just what I wanted to make. Like in call, I, I think I was. I'm probably just an emotional kid. I don't know. Like I grew up uh, not being loved enough or shown enough uh, <laughs> oh, no. acceptance or um, you know uh, getting enough. Uh, I love yous from my mom and dad. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> they, they showed it in different ways, obviously, <laughs> by you know you know supporting me and paying for college or whatever. Right. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but I think you know, growing up, just yeah, like I I did enjoy love stories. I I enjoyed the feeling of of love and feeling just feeling i loved feeling i guess right <laughs> right and so when we started making stuff yeah like i made observations about my relationships or my friends relationships and um and yeah people gravitated towards that or people were able to relate as well like to the way i was translating my thoughts or my feelings of this particular breakup or this particular path of you know how i met this you know one girl or how we you know became friends or what, or being like a nice guy and, be, and being, you know, uh, ignored and friends zone, right? <laughs> like these are all things that are very, like I said, very human, a Asian or not, you know, like mm -hmm. we, they're just human emotions. And um, yeah, I guess people just gravitated towards that. And uh, I wouldn't say that we like tried to like exploit that. Like, you know, we actually, that's why 
we still have mostly comedies because actually the emotional stuff does take a little bit longer. It takes time. Mm-hmm. We just released a short. Uh, you need better actors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. just we just released. Yeah, that that's true. Like you need a. There's a little bit more that you need to you know get out of the the, the talent. Um, but yeah, we just released a short like two weeks ago. That was a script that I was sitting on for like six years because oh, really? we were trying to find the right timing to release this. And and yeah, it's like a, a more emotional or meaningful one, but. Um, I, I'm find, I'm you, glad. Yeah. Do you find that observation comes from writing? <laughs> D- that the more you wrote, the more you ate, the more you st- stepped back and started <laughs> observing other people, um, and, and what they did. You I know? think I think it's a little bit of that. I think it's also, and, and we we say this a lot. Like you know, when we when we talk to like fans that ask like, oh, like how do you find inspiration? Like it really is just like a lens that you choose to see the world in. Like I I I enjoy. Um, I th- you know, have you ever heard of this this thing called like the the dictionary of you know s- sad thoughts? Or, I don't know. Basically, like there's this w- these made up words that are supposed to like mean um, some like very abstract thoughts. So there's this mm. th- there's this like word called sonder that's like oh like knowing that everyone you pass by has like their own story and is going through their own struggle and they're okay. Anyways, yeah. Um, so I I actually inspiration is everywhere that's like such a you know like cheesy uh saying but it's like you know when you pass by you know anyone on the street like they are going through you know something difficult or something exciting or something funny and i think like that that when i know that everyone has that like that actually really excites me i guess and Hmm. and like wanting to find those stories those human stories that's that's actually like kind of where um i draw inspiration from and i and uh, yeah a lot of it is still like from personal experience um I have had, you know, my share of uh, heartbreak or heartache, or I should say, and uh, and I just I feel like maybe that's like my outlet. I can't write music, you know, and I I'm yeah. not a good painter, but I I enjoy analyzing emotions, I guess, and like why we feel things. Yeah, yeah. Do any of those stories like stand out to you? Things that you look back on, you're like that that one emotion or that story around that emotion, like that really speaks to me, or that one really hit like the target. I mean. Yeah, I think I think everyone has, uh, you know, the, I mean, that's like asking like, what's your favorite video? Like, we always get asked this. Like, everyone's every, every video has like a special place. Um, but yeah, there's a couple that you know are definitely like our highest viewed, and I, I'm glad that people uh, can find something in themselves in it. And um, I think the the best feeling that I have, and um, when I, in terms of our videos, is that I love that because we've been doing this for so long people can now watch an older video and, and understand it differently because mm-hmm. it's, it's about relationships or, or emotions. So when I, when I see comments and we get this a lot like, oh, I watched this five years ago, I watched this seven years ago and I thought, I thought it meant one thing. Now I'm watching it like, you know, in my late 20s and now it means something completely different. And I, I, I love that our work evolves with people, you know, like mm-hmm. that it's not just, oh, it was there for entertainment at one place in time. Which is which is good. Like they're, like we need videos like that too. But I love that we have some things that are like, oh, this is something that will grow with you as you're understanding yourself better. So mm. how, yeah. how do you develop those layers in a piece? Um, I think it's about being vulnerable and being uh, being just very uh, honest with yourself. I think like there's a lot of um, just people in general that like are afraid to really examine now we're getting to like psychology and stuff here yeah but like you know like i i i definitely allow myself to i think um simmer in thoughts sometimes more than i think a normal person like i remember like i had a friend that used to say phil you you love love like (laughs) too much you know like and i'm like isn't this what everyone feels like i I think like when i everyone no doubt feels love and i think i just like to spend a little bit more time of like why how did this happen? You know, like I, I like to see almost like a scientific approach to these emotions, and I think that's that's where it comes from. Is that yeah. intimidating to anybody that's dating you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it definitely. So I mean, yeah, my girlfriend now. Uh, we we have conversations about it. We have, but the thing is, I I I think I like to find uh, not I like to find as if this happens, but like the people that I end up with usually are pretty um, thoughtful themselves too, and I think most um most girls you know like they want their boyfriends to you know be more communicative about their emotions and so sometimes i actually feel like i'm <laughs> i'm too much and i'm like why am i the one that's trying to pull this out of you do you know how many, you know how so many girls are trying to get this out of their boyfriend you should be lucky you know? so yeah huh. how do you how do you be vulnerable online mm-hmm. like how do you take these oh. personal stories and 
put, like how can you even bring yourself to put them out there? I think, you know what, I think nowadays it's, it's easier because I know that that's what people appreciate of us. Mm. And so when we first started, there was less at stake, you know, and we can talk about this, this whole like beginning of YouTube era like later, but like when we first started, there was no expectations of what, um, you know, channel or, an, or even like an online personality was supposed to be. That's how old like our channel and we are. Um, <laughs> that you know social media wasn't even a thing yet mm -hmm. so we were just literally like oh this was just fun i think just as a filmmaker you want to write a story and like luckily like you know we had some people watch and like so i guess to answer your question we were um positively reinforced from a very early on in our channel to do this i can imagine yeah like maybe at corridor right now if you wanted to like <laughs> make you know a piece about like you know your your, your uh, relationships in the past, or whatever, that your your audience might be like, "Whoa, Nico, <laughs> I didn't know this about you." Right, and that might be intimidating, but I don't know. I feel like I feel like people, especially nowadays, people appreciate authenticity. People appreciate when um, they feel like you're human, like them too. You know, mm. so um, nowadays is yeah, it's not as much of a challenge now. Now now it's. It's so it's very rewarding actually to do that, and I and I I'm, I'm it's interesting to hear you ask that question because I I I guess I've gotten so used to it that even you asking that question makes me like step back and go think oh yeah I guess this is a we're really lucky that we get to be fully transparent in ourselves and and not be judged for it mm -hmm. at the same time we do get judged by people that are like oh Wang Fu's so cheesy Wang Fu why do you guys you guys are so <laughs> like you know sappy so and to those people I'd be like oh you guys you need to think about your emotions more <laughs> you know like I feel sorry for you that you can't that this is too much for you <laughs> yeah so you know you have obviously well I guess a bunch of videos are comedy and only some of them are romantic yeah, yeah. <laughs> but even so you're definitely seen as a little bit of an authority on this topic mm. you know looking at yourself now do you feel like you're an authority on the topic or do you ever feel like you have like imposter syndrome where yeah, you're like you i just it. ended oh. up here because i can make videos that people watch that's uh, i have you asked this question to other uh i asked this question to myself actually, oh okay all the time. <laughs> you know what i think this is why i actually feel like i connect with nico I, we don't we don't hang out as much as i think we should because I, I get it <laughs> yeah, we're, we we're, both, hang out more. we're both very busy but i feel like there's like a midwest boy in me somewhere and somewhere. yeah um, so but, I heard uh, that cool yeah. veneer. <laughs> no, no, I think um, I think it's because we, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed making videos when I was younger. There was never a point where I thought I could do this for a living. Mm -hmm. And I, I read stories about like directors now and, um, you know, filmmakers that are like, oh, I, he, I wanted to be a director since, you know, I was in kindergarten. The way that they talk about being an astronaut is how they, they talk about being a director. For me, that wasn't that wasn't how it was because I, I, I just thought it was just never my cards. I, I solves there are so few examples of asian people doing it anyway so i just didn't think that it was even possible a possible route so the fact that it happened was it, it did happen kind of i don't want to say accidentally but we were definitely at a crossing point of technology and opportunity and even society too like culture being ready for uh this shift in how people consume media right mm -hmm. and so Luckily, I made a, some videos in college and we were confident enough because I was in college and my all of our student mates, you know, we all egg each other on to like release things and and high speed Internet, which is just coming around in college. So it was able to spread in college. And then um, and then uh, it just kind of went from there. But I yeah, I, I don't think that I, I didn't calculate that. So nowadays when I'm here, sometimes I, like like you're asking, like I kind of feel like I have just been going with the flow. Uh -huh. And but trying to make business decisions and choices to make this flow as as good as possible because right. it's a good gig, right? Yeah. Like I'm not I, we stress out all the time, but I always step back. I'm like, look, no week is the same. You know, we get to literally the things that we think in our head, we get to go make, and people pay for it. Pe millions of people want to wait to see the next thing. Like that's a that's a blessing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I, I I don't feel like I ever asked for this and so now I, I really I'm just trying to deserve it hmm. um, because I feel like there's so many people that want this and like I don't want to feel like um, I'm taking it for granted but no 100% like I'm just uh, you know especially in the beginning years when people are like you're a role model you know you're a voice for Asian Americans I was like oh no this is too much like hmm. I'm not that political I'm not that I'm just the guy that just went to you know UC San Diego and made some lip sync videos or <laughs> whatever um, but now because I were older um, I understand that even though I can't explain why I got here mm -hmm. the fact is that we're here and I need to um, I need to 
take advantage is the wrong word, but I need to not waste this. And I need to be responsible with this voice mm -hmm. and hopefully make a positive impact because I, I, I'm not going to be able to do this forever. You know, like at some point, you know, I'm going to be gone. And, and But hopefully like what we, the intangibles can, can keep going, mm -hmm. right? And so that's what I want. That's what I'm more excited about these days actually like less about like how do i get more views how, like I, I do worry about that obviously <laughs> as a business owner or whatever but it's i think just because we've been doing this for so long i'm a little bit removed from the rat race of like i need to be this personality i need to be this yeah. this thing and it's more just like how do i just do good with what we have right you're one of the rare rare channels or i should say I shouldn't even say channels you're one of the rare creators it's not a personality based creator mm -hmm. per se not right. to say that your personality isn't in your work and that right. you're not in your work yourself at times but yeah. like you're definitely not marketing yourself on like, hey, I'm Phil Wing. Check yeah. me out. It's Phil Wing here. The Phil Wing. Show. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, and Which, that's and that's what so much of YouTube is and mm -hmm. and relies on. And I and I get it, like because that's how you know a lot of these channels are one man shows that and that's how it starts. Um, but I think true longevity comes from when you can take your image or your personality and turn it into a community or a brand, which is why I think I you know, look up to Corridor so much and also relate to you guys so much is because, I mean, yeah, you, Sam, you know, you, you know, Sam and Nico is a, is a thing, but I mean, now your, your, your crew has, you know, over a million subscribers themselves too, right? And like this brand that you guys are creating. I remember when I was like, first time, you guys got to make merch. You guys got to make merch. Do you yeah. remember that? Like this is like, back. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying I'm taking credit, but I was, I was well, one of the voices. Here, you guys are a big influence in us getting merch off the ground too. <laughs> so we'll get into that story in a second yeah, actually. Yeah. But there, I just want to say like, there was a phrase that you used that I really like, which was, you're not sure how you got here or you're not sure if you earned it, but now you're working to deserve it. Right. And I actually really like how you phrased that. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah I think, and, and I, and I get that from you guys too. Cause I, I feel like, um, by all measures of what YouTube success is, you guys could have gone a very different route and not to say that you guys have made like, you know, the wrong choices, but I'm glad that over the years I can still see like, Oh, this is still the, the brand or the, the, uh, quality that has, has like, remain the same and hasn't deteriorated or hasn't changed too much or been influenced too much by the scene mm -hmm. or the the industry as as it is right now and yeah. and that's a whole other conversation about youtube but yeah well i think there's a question anybody has to ask himself when they reach a certain level of, of success and not even a high level of yeah. success but just one where you're like it's working the wheels going around and mm -hmm. things are happening and like okay cool so you know you made it work yeah and the question you have to ask yourself is at that point where do my intentions and my need to sustain myself, like where do they diverge? Mm. Um, because at a certain point you can make a decision to make more money or you can make a decision to make something that's maybe not quite so popular, but you can still support yourself on right. it. But that might be a little more true to what you want to do right. or a message you want to put out there. And like, it's one thing if the decision is like, if it's like, well, I could make a thousand more dollars if I made this like, yeah. you know, slime channel <laughs> or I could make you know keep doing what I'm doing and maybe make $500 it's yeah. like maybe that difference isn't so great but at a certain point especially once you know you've been around YouTube long enough you yeah. can see his points where it's like oh I could make one of these channels and probably make a million dollars or I could stick with what I'm doing and just you know life's good but I'm not making a million dollars you know right right um, and I think that choice already in itself is is a huge privilege that we have you know that's yeah. like we uh, the fact that we can choose between what are we passionate about versus we need to make money right now, you know, like, mm -hmm. but the, th the thing is, like, I don't even ju like going off to make the, the money, like, or it's more about like, why are you trying to, to make that money to mm -hmm. me? Like if, if you want to make a million, if you guys wanted to do that slime channel, like I wouldn't judge you guys necessarily un until like a little bit. I would judge you guys I would, a little bit. <laughs> I, I would judge us. Well, here, well, here's the thing. And this is, this is where, this is what we do too. Like, and I, I know you guys do. If you guys were to do a slime video, you would do it in your way right <laughs> so like we've yeah. done we've done that too like we've we've hopped on not hopped on we've we made commentary on on trendy type videos but we would make it our way or, or we would turn it into like a wong fu type video and I, I know that and you guys have done that already like so anyways but like <laughs> when we when we talk to people these days like especially when they're like oh i, I want to be a youtuber like how do i like give me advice i will say like just make sure like you know like why you want to make videos like if you want to be uh a personality and just get famous and get a Lamborghini or whatever, you're going to make certain decisions and make certain videos. Fine. If that's, if that's why you want to do it, sure. But just know that it's going to be very short lived. It's going to be kind of unfulfilling yeah. in the long run. Um, but just be aware of that. But if you actually like care about telling stories, um, reaching people, expanding your craft, learning, um, then you should do it 
that like because it's this is a hard job mm -hmm. like it's it's very difficult to maintain to start it maintain it so if you have the right mentality going into it like if fame comes with that then that's great you know but like just know just hopefully like you're coming into this this industry with good intentions and not yeah. just like entertainment industry like that's not the case for a lot of people some people just want to be famous you know yeah yeah it's easy to get attention for sure yeah yeah it's hard to maintain uh it's hard to get you know okay this is also another thing that with age i think i've i've, I've learned too is like there's the there's i feel like the quality of views is is actually way more beneficial than the quantity of views oh, these definitely. days because yeah. yeah and i and i remember like i actually freddie told me this like or I, this always stuck with me when he was doing his video game high school Kickstarter, like, you know, back in the day, he's like, look, I have, we have, you know, millions of subscribers, but 10,000 people were willing to give money to this project. I'd rather have these 10,000 forever than, mm -hmm. you know, 10 million that are just coming, coming through or whatever. Right. right. So, yeah. um, that's, that's always stuck with me. Yeah. That's honestly, that's a, a huge difference between our corridor channel and our corridor crew channel or the mm -hmm. corridor cast channel Yeah, is that the, a big chunk of the corridor channel is just people walking through the internet and the winds of yeah. viral videos right. blow on them and this little video <laughs> flies through like oh that's neat and passing yeah, it goes through away. the suggested right. feed yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but you have a net and it's like hey, hey whoever passes through this and comes into the corridor crew yeah now we got you you know and like <laughs> right. so that's so yeah like that then you get the quality viewer right so even mm. when like there's dips in subscriber counts or whatever i'm, I'm actually like not that scared any i used to be a lot more scared because mm -hmm. Um, but now it's like, yeah, like whoever we end up with, uh, like we know that they're going to be there with us for a while, you know, and, and I think that's more valuable. There's an observation I've made that maybe you've made it too and tell me if you agree with this, but I feel like the way, the way trends work, perhaps online, and this might apply to everything actually, but it's, it's to me, it's a, a three year trend mm. where you can establish a thing, you can make it work for yourself, you can follow through with it and yeah. you have three years until it's basically done mm -hmm. and then you need to evolve. Yeah. I mean, you should, ideally you're evolving throughout the entire process. Right. So you're never, you know, you're never like at the end turn. of the three yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think like, you know, anybody who's like blown up doing a certain thing, like let's say if some guy gets famous for juggling swords, yeah. he gets super famous <laughs> and everybody loves it. He's got three years yeah. Yeah, before be it's done. He better be learning how to <laughs> juggle, juggle something, something else <laughs> while yeah. he's juggling the swords. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I see that like with our content, like, you know, we try to evolve every year um, with our content. It basically, it's funny because like we kind of have a set time for it, which is mm. December and January and oh. going into February, at least for the quarter crew channel, that's when we evolve. Oh. And we, last year we were very public with like, we're not going to do the traditional vlog thing anymore. We're going to yeah. try to make it more of a show. And yeah. then, you know, we tried a bunch of different things and it was wonky and we finally settled into it like around you know march yeah <laughs> but but you guys like may <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you, you, you commit to an idea mm -hmm. and then you see it through and then you force yourself to reevaluate and make adjustments yeah that's that i mean a lot of youtubers are really afraid to do that or they don't have a system mm -hmm. in place or they don't have the leadership to make that happen also yeah so i think that's that's so true i think um yeah i i the three year three years is a is a good amount of time because that's also just the amount of time for people to like grow out of things too. I right. think that's the other thing to doing this for so long. You we have definitely seen like the effects of just aging of mm -hmm. of, of, of our of our audience, right? Right. We yeah. have fans now that that uh, that approach me at like the grocery store or whatever with a stroller, you know, and they're <laughs> like, dude, I I watched you this whatever whatever and they'll be like, You guys still doing stuff? I'm like yeah, man, we just, <laughs> we just released the video, you know, but it's all good. We had you then, right? And then yeah. some, are, some are still keeping up, but like, it's just, it's, it, YouTubers don't think be, like the, uh, about the fact that these fans are going to like, you know, grow out of their stuff. And unless you give them something new or exciting to say, hey, this creator's still developing, this, they're still evolving. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, okay, I, I'm good. Like I, I will watch you and be nostalgic of you the same way I'm nostalgic of like SpongeBob. All the people that are using SpongeBob memes, they're not still watching, right? right? They're 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 just nostalgic of like oh like that time, right? Or I I, I liken it to um like a music actually a lot. You know, you have you, you have these bands that have their fans that are just going to be stuck with them for for life, but it's because of that particular era mm -hmm. that they made music that was meaningful or nostalgic to them. A lot of people aren't waiting for the new, you know, <laughs> their new out, the new. Did you guys listen to the new ACDC yeah, album? Right. <laughs> like, I, I was like thinking about who's a good band that like would make sense, but 
you know what I mean? Like a lot of people just like play the hits, just Guns play and the Roses. Hits. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's like he's like really mad. He's like I, I just bought Guns and Roses. Album. <laughs> and if you have in, if you have a, a fraction of your audience that does that, that that that's good. Like they they have lasted through like the test of time. But most <clears> people are just gonna want you for that season of mm-hmm. your life, right? And so you either need to capture it or you need to try to evolve yourself. Like like Michael Jackson, every decade, you know, was like we got a different Michael Jackson, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's actually someone uh, at YouTube that told me this, like a like a partner manager, but she's like. Um, if you think about like a TV show, if a TV show goes on for six seasons, that's a long, yeah. healthy, successful show. Yeah. That's going into syndication, Definitely. right? Yeah. And like YouTubers, a lot of creators, especially if they're like a vlogger or, or, or like a sword juggler, <laughs> <laughs> you guys need to make a, s- a video about that now. About it's the guy, best. the fourth year of that sword oh, juggler. Yeah, like sword what, juggler. Yeah, what he's doing now. Act when he decides not to catch with... the last sword, yeah. he just throws up. He's like, this is yeah. it. This is... <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of these people, like, they're in their sixth season or whatever, sixth season of their channel, and they're like, wait, my views are going down. This is YouTube's fault. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. like the algorithm's not, not doing it or, or whatever. And it's like, no, it's just like any show people moved on and you know what's crazy is that these mainstream actors that are on these huge tv shows when their show gets canceled they're not like studio you change things what the fuck you know mm-hmm. they're like oh i guess i gotta go find another gig <laughs> isn't that yeah. crazy like, these like these a-listers are like i have to go find another job and you have youtube creators right now that are like no i deserve to be famous forever mm-hmm. you know that's just like, i'm like yeah. the entitlement is like so crazy now <laughs> all time high my it's friend it's really ridiculous and i'm like no like you need to push yourself and give them something new you know like so yeah. that's when people like write books and stuff i guess or, like, <laughs> they uh they pitch start pitching tv shows and yeah, stuff, yeah which i think uh, pewdiepie is a great example of somebody who has evolved his content mm. to like because you know if you think about it game videos like gaming videos yeah. are old news remember when they were like the hot new thing on youtube like that was yeah he brought that whole wave up with it yeah it's like he, he and a wave. bunch of those you know markiplier yeah. and jacksepticeye it's like we're playing video games like you're watching people play video games wow yeah. what you know it's like what a lame thing yeah. and it's like now it's just blow life. up yeah yeah but then like PewDiePie. they're doing their thing for like a year or two and then vine happened and then vine shut down and all those viners came over Uh-oh. and then that was the new wave yeah. and now the video gamers were what we were like when the video gamers <laughs> yeah. came onto YouTube. Where they're yeah. like, oh, there's a new hot thing and we're not Dude. it. <laughs> Dude, that, that, I think like that moment for like a lot of um, popular kids is like a very humbling moment when they realize, oh wait, there's other, the fans are like, I have fans, but like, they're gonna go like they can go to someone else yeah. like what like yeah. i thought i thought you were for me only you know like <laughs> there's still talented people being yeah. born and growing up and like yeah. entering the industry oh yeah. no yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> and like new ages that are growing into the age of consumption that want that you are actually the old school one you know yeah. like like it's 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 uh that's it's like the, truth, the yeah. uh what's his name david dobrik <laughs> have you seen any of his videos i i have not it's it's basically like a almost like a vine compilation but it's done in a vlog and there's oh hard cuts God. to different scenes and it's just oh, man. manic screaming yeah. with like his friends doing cr- just isn't that what the paul insane. brothers do too like yes but whole, it's yeah. like so much it's so much more raw than that like what? even the paul brothers videos have edit <laughs> <laughs> this is literally like hard cut on a phone like you edit yeah, it with yeah. a phone oh editor and uploaded it it's yeah that's the dream guys that's like the new, that's <laughs> but that's the equivalent that's today's equivalent right there yeah. no for sure for sure it's so, wild yeah i mean i don't know like i think you know for us we've been doing this for 15 years if you want if you count our first video in college which is if you do the math before youtube started yeah. yes we yeah. were we bought server space <laughs> that we used to access through an FTP. What do you even call it? An FTP, FTP. something. Yeah. An FTP. Yeah. Had a had a domain, a, a website that had a link that people had to right click and download a file that we would send that link and put in people's buddy lists on mm. AIM. <laughs> and people would download the file and watch it on a media player. Like that sentence is just <laughs> what so <laughs> archaic. <laughs> what codec did you use? Oh man! Was it Sorensen Video Three or was it like Windows Media Video? Yeah, it was or? Windows. So I, I edited it on Pinnacle. Okay. Pinnacle like four or something. I don't know. Um, on my Dell and <laughs> uh, and it's just crazy that to see how much it's it's changed and evolved. But like, it's like, hey, my know. buddy's downloaded a bunch of internet videos. <laughs> you want to come over and watch them? <laughs> Dude, I mean, those, going back to those e bombs days, man. Like, yeah. Break.com. 
I actually <laughs> just recently met someone that was like, oh yeah, I was like the VP of whatever at, e at break.com like back in the day. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you're old. Well, I mean, I, I was there too. I'm like, we're old, yeah. We're talking about break.com. Um, so going back to this, um, stepping into this, uh, I guess, advice role, um, <laughs> at what point did you start to feel comfortable with it? You know, at what point? And um, what was it about it? I think like, that's a good question. I, I, I think once I realized that I was significantly older than people and that I actually did have <laughs> more life experience than, than a lot of people that were asking for advice. I'm not saying I'm like the guru, like, you know, but like for a lot of people asking me, I, when I started to see like, oh, I actually can't help you because I actually do have some insight on this. I think that is the moment that kind of made me lean into it more. Yeah. Um, and also when I kind of like looked to my left and right and I realized that, oh, not a lot of other creators or YouTubers or Asian American, you know, uh, creators are trying to help, you know, in the same way. So I was like, you know, I don't want this to be a void and I don't want, um, I don't want, uh, it's not that I saw like a, a moment to pounce on. I was like, oh, right. Someone should help and speak on this stuff, you know, and, and, and if, if people want to know, like, I don't want, I don't want it to be like, I had an opportunity to help and I didn't, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Right. Um, so do you feel like that came with a sense of responsibility to, to, oh, Totally. Yeah. I, I feel like, I mean, literally like when we have Q and A's, people like ask like relationship questions sometimes <laughs> or, or like uh, life advice or career advice. And I'm like, Hey man, everyone's going through something. I, I'd have to have a sit down life coach conversation with you for like an hour. <laughs> like, but, um, for sure, pursue your passions and don't <laughs> give up, you know, like, but, uh, I mean, like I, I, I am very careful. Like actually like in general with our content these days, we are, very sensitive about like what we put out there. Um, like we, we try to make sure that we're, we, we, we look at the content or the story or the characters or the casting from a very 360 perspective. And like, it, yeah. it kind of sucks that we have to do that. And I don't mean that in like a, oh, uh, like it's such a chore, but it's like the fact that we will get s judged so hard, you know, on like little decisions of, of the story so or things like that. What kind of a, can you give me, a, can you give us an example? Of that? I mean, for example, like, I um, mean, even just casting like a person in a video, okay? Like we have to think about should they be Asian or not? You know, like it's like really? we can't we can't just have like a default like yeah, they should be Asian because that's just who I imagine. Cuz here's the thing, like if we put someone that's Asian as a lead, we know that there's going to be a large um, or the people generally will glance over and be like, "Oh, this might be this must be like an Asian thing." Right? Like the default is not to think like, "Oh, this is just a video that is just a video like it would be like oh is this an asian thing first it doesn't help that our name is wong fu productions either <laughs> um I'll, I'll be the first to admit that but then like so like you know if we if we want to be more um you know uh i guess if we want to be people people think that we pigeon ourselves as as asians like oh you guys only cast asians which is not true but like we do want to give opportunities to asian american actors um and so if we do that, people, some people will say, oh, you guys need to like open up your, you know, open up your group more and have more diversity. It's funny, like white people are the diversity <laughs> in, our, in our narrative. Um, but then if we do that, we also have a large portion of our audience that will be like, man, you guys sold out. You guys are supposed to represent us. And, and why, why, would you, why would you do this? You're supposed to tell our stories, you know? And like, so even something as simple as like, who do we put as the lead is already something that we have to like consciously, consciously say, this one's going to be this. You know? So what do you what do yeah. you do in the person being the person that's making that decision? How do you make that decision? So so these days, like I'm, these days I'm like pretty unapologetic about it. like I, I the, the we will always have at least I think one lead that's Asian American. Um, that's just because of we want to give those opportunities since they don't have as much out there, and so if people want to give us a hard time about it, like that's another thing too. Like we know that th there are Wong Fu haters out there, and like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's like you know, we're actually trying to make a difference yeah. and a lot of haters in general are not, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't like what we're doing, then you should go make it yourself, right? right? And not in an arrogant way, but like literally haters, go make things, you know? And then you can you can be part of the conversation. Be the change yeah. you want to be in the world. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't want to get into it, but like there's even like, even like, because we tell like a lot of romantic stories, right? So even like, it, like what pairing of, of races that we have to like, that's something that like we have to be sensitive to because there's different pr perspectives in the community of like, you know, what's 
acceptable or what's offensive or, or whatnot. And it's just like, oh man, I wish we could just like not think about this, you know, and that we could just be accepted for just putting ourselves as we are, you know, so like do you so. just decide at a certain point and just go, you know what, this is how I feel about this role and these characters yeah. and how they would interact. So this is what I'm going to make it. Yeah. Generally it's about that. We, we still do. We want to definitely also be conscious that, you know, the world, is diverse and we do want to reflect that as well but at the same time you know i actually take a lot of like notes from like the african-american like entertainment community like they have like a lot of great films where they're just unapologetically like yeah this is just a group of you know african-american friends and like they don't have to explain why right. you know mm -hmm. and and same thing like there's tons of movies that are just like a group of of white people it's like and they don't have to explain why right. like, i wish we could get to a point where we can choose to do that or not do that and not explain why you know um, and that gets really dicey. Like I, I, I mean, we we want to. If we're asking for inclusion, we should be inclusive too. But at the same time, we're trying to balance, trying to give ourselves, you know, opportunities as well. So that's see, this is all the stuff that we have to think about yeah, before we it's cast something. You know, no, like, totally. Yeah. And there's different expectations from, you know, the fans. Yeah. You know, like and what what they think that you know we should we should do. Yeah, we have some yeah. very hardcore fans. Not not on the racial stuff yeah. but in like if we step away outside of filmmaking mm -hmm. people will some people will oh you guys have changed oh uh, like i want like, the old videos <laughs> you know what is this yeah, this yeah. doesn't feel like any work was put into this oh man dude y you yeah. know everyone everyone like that's that's another thing like doing this for a long time you realize you can't please everyone and people only know what they don't want Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> no one knows what they want. <laughs> like when you give it to them, and they love it. Then they realize, oh yeah, that's what I wanted. But they will only they only know like I don't like that. You yeah. know, like so. Yeah. At the end of the day, you guys just have to be, or we all have to just be honest with what we want to make. That's like we're we're in the driver's seat, right? And obviously, be conscious of you know uh, of you know how our content affects people. But you know, you can only do that to a certain point before you are completely like just you know pandering. Yeah, and then you're yeah. just pandering to everybody yeah. that has a complaint. Exactly, and exactly. That and, doesn't and, help anything. Exactly, right. I think right. that the ultimate, at least one of the ultimate challenges I see with representing diversity in videos, or I guess really in anything, but you know, for us, it's videos because that's yeah. what we do. Right. Is you kind of have two options, and one is like, do you focus on race and ethnicity to represent diversity? Yeah. In one hand, you're representing diversity, but you're also now focusing on race and ethnicity yeah, to yeah, do yeah. so. Or do you not focus on race and ethnicity, which has its own merits, but at the same time, you end up sometimes not having as much diversity yeah. as you do that. <laughs> and so it's like they both can have like noble pursuits, but they can both have right. bad causes because of that or vice versa. Well, well I would say this just to uh, disavow you of, of some of that concern. Like the fact that you're even aware of that <laughs> is already like what a lot of people don't even, mm -hmm. they don't even take that step, right? So. Mm -hmm. If you take that first step of, of thinking about it, like then that's already what more than like 99% of like Hollywood's probably doing. Um, I mean, like, I agree. Like I think, at least from my perspective, there's, it's, it's exactly like those two. Cause like in terms of like wanting to be seen and feel um, like we're accepted, there's, there's two ways to present Asians or diversity, right? It's like you paint it red and mm -hmm. you can, and now you can educate people. Now you can say, this is what makes us different, but also the same. Like, for, so for example, like a show like Fresh Off the Boat or whatever, mm -hmm. where it's like, this is clearly, you know, we're going to bring you into our world, mm -hmm. right? Or you do it like what you said, where it's like, we don't even draw attention to it and it's just a character and they're human and this is just a family or this is just a group of friends. Um, and that has, its both actually have, um, uh, both actually have benefits, I think, mm -hmm. to push the message forward. I don't think, I think once you try to choose one or the other, that's when, that's when you actually have like a, a, a disagreement actually between like, it's literally two like um, ways of thinking from like the community where it's like, mm -hmm. which is actually the best one. I actually think it's, it's a, it's a case by case situation depending on the story of the project. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. As is most things in life. Yeah. Really, <laughs> you know? It depends. <laughs> that's, that's the problem with this, with this uh, era right now. Like everyone wants to have a 280 character tweet where it's like, this is definitive. Yeah. Right. Phil, is this black or is this white? Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, no. uh, uh, yeah. Well, there was that one shade of, of light yeah. that got in there. Gray, yeah. Now it's gray. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> It's dark gray, so it's definitely black. Yeah, <laughs> right. But it, now it's under really bright light, and so yeah. it's 
So Sorry, I'm did, going way too Did you mention you own a coffee shop? <laughs> huh? Do you own a coffee shop? <laughs> I'm in the, I I technically do right now. It's not grand open. By the time this comes out, it will be open. I'm Wait, guessing. are you leaving YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've, I've always just had this uh, passion for having a brick Good and coffee. mortar. It's a boba coffee shop. So like it's, it's, oh. it's tea, milk tea, boba, and also we have espresso coffee. That's um, awesome. Yeah, and I think <laughs> there's, I mean, I think uh, it's, um, it's something I've always wanted to do. Uh, so just to take you back through, so yes, I- I'm I, tickled by the story. Yeah, I, <laughs> we, you know, they teach you in film school, you know, you, you make videos and then you go sell coffee. You know, like that's, that's what- You I, gotta open a restaurant, yeah, right? Yeah, in, 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 in between you sell stuffed animals like we did, right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, merchandising should be a very important course that they teach in film school. Um, <laughs> should be is, now. It should be, yeah. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what that's why we have Star Wars. Um, so I think, so basically when I was growing up in high school, um, boba milk tea. Are you guys familiar with boba milk tea? Love boba. So I, if, I feel like it was just coming to the States. And by the States, like I think just like California because it was like the closest thing from Asia. So... <laughs> I remember growing up and first being introduced it in, introduced to it and thinking like, oh, this is so obviously it's really good. It's a unique, but then also it gave me like a sense of pride. Like I feel like, um, you know, growing up as a minority or like we as a first generation, we don't Asian Americans. Most of the people here have are like first generation. So there's actually no established Asian American culture, hmm. and so we actually had to adopt and take on other people's cultures. And that's why, you know, I listened to hip hop and R&B, but then I also listened to Blink-182 and like, you know, went through like a, a alternative phase, you know, like we, <laughs> yeah. we took from other peoples, right? Um, which, which makes sense and it's totally fine. That's the beauty of America. Mm-hmm. Um, but Boba was like the first thing that I was like, oh, this is like from like my culture and it's here now. And like, I feel like this is cool and like I'm accepted. And hmm. where did oh, it originate? Uh, it's like, like Taiwan, China, like it's, okay. it's it's from like yeah, like East Asia, but like definitely like th- that's that's gonna be a dicey question because somebody <laughs> gonna be like uh. Taiwan, China, yeah. Um, there, you just had to ask that. No, no, that's okay. Um, so was, I, I almost saw it as like it was like our barber shop, you know, like it was like yeah. a place where mm. like I felt accepted and they played like you know Chinese music and like, anyways, and so I thought it was cool. When I went to college, I went. To, I worked at a boba shop, you know, uh, to you know just make it some extra money. And I felt the community. I loved people watching. I loved feeling like I was a bartender or whatever. <laughs> um, and then when I moved to LA, uh, I actually got a lot of like work done at boba shops because like I feel like a lot of like cafes, like let's say like a Starbucks or like a traditional like American coffee shop, it's just you get espresso and you maybe get like a pastry. But like at these places, you can get like a meal with the drink and you can sit there, there's Wi-Fi. So like I enjoyed that whole process and wrote a lot of scripts, you know, like at, at boba shops. And I'm like, I want, I want one of these for myself, you know, hmm. like as, as um, you know, uh, Wong Fu's grown, uh, I've just, it's just, it was always something that was like sticking around. Like I, that's something I, I always joke, like when all, Wong Fu goes away, I'll just be sweeping up my, my boba cafe at the end of the day, you know, like, and that would be and nice. all rhymes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just be on my rocking chair, you know, selling milk tea. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, kind of, like, things align where I found, like, a business partner that was also in between some, you know, of like, his career, and he's always wanted to go into hospitality and, and, um, and culinary, like, you know, arts. And so we linked up on this, and I, I, I even joked, I'm like, hey, uh, Eric, Eric is his name. Also, last name Wang, <laughs> not related. Doesn't support the whole joke that all Asians are related. Um, but Wang is the second most popular last name in the world. Though, really? So, like, it's hard to avoid that. Um, it's Li and then Wang. Oh wow. Um, L I or L L-E-E, E? I'm guessing. But that doesn't count because there's a lot of like you know non-Asian Lees too. So that probably is what helps. Well, it. Anyway, so that's the Anglican spelling of it. So maybe. Yeah. yeah like, who knows? Li Li. <laughs> there's so many now. Yeah. Um, so I, I joked with him. I'm like, uh, look, I'm only getting less popular, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who knows? Like, unless whatever whatever I'm making every year depends. But like, as of right now, like day to day, I'm only getting less popular, right? Or like my 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 my, my uh, social marketing power is only like diminishing with each day if I if I stop doing things now, right? Mm. So like, let's go make this boba shop so I can like you know send fans over and you know we can we can make a business out of this and it, it is something I'm really passionate about. So. Yeah, I mean, like I'm, I've been working on it for like two years and haven't really told anyone about it because hmm. I didn't never knew where it was going. But like, we finally got a spot in October. Have been renovating it and I've been learning so much about 
ADA compliance and <laughs> learning so much about like materials and finishes and we, you know, like working with like a design firm and everything. Like it's, it's been a really cool experience. And we had a soft opening in January and seeing people come in and, um, you know, a lot of them obviously being, you know, fans of, 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 of Wang Fu also like, it's, it's so cool that now I have like a place, a yeah. public place that yeah. embodies or that can um, bring people together for that. Did you, yeah. did you have to get a loan or did you have to um, No, that? so we found, we found investors for it. And yeah. luckily yeah, it's, it's people, it's a lot of it was friends and family, but like the, the, it was still people that believed in, they've seen what we've done with Wang Fu or what I've done with Wang Fu. And they're like, okay, you seem like you work pretty hard and you're probably not going to waste this, you know? Yeah. Like, so, um, and we weren't like raising that much, but, um, you know, we have, yeah, we have a group of investors and a lot of them were just like, I just want to support your dream, you know, and, uh, and I know you're not going to lose this. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have it a takes special a long time recipe? to get that credit. Huh? Do you have a special recipe? Like uh, a, we, a signature drink? Yeah, we have, we, we have one that Eric is really proud of that he made up. Um, it's a carrot juice matcha milk tea. Oh. So it's like this very sweet, the sweetness that, and like the, it's like a healthy feeling like boba. The boba is actually like pretty unhealthy. There's like a lot of sugar <laughs> in it. I want you to get like a, like a real, you know, a real, real milk tea. Like we, we're different from other places. Like we, you know, we, we use, you know, real milk like a lot of places just use creamers we use real fruit a lot of places, people just use syrups but yeah so we're trying to like make this kind of like fusion of of things the way that i i i describe like our we have food also it's like a mix of the things that like my mom made at home versus the things i ate at like my school cafeteria like that's to me that's like the asian american experience where like i had i had what i ate you know from my mom's cooking but then i also really wanted tater tots you know like <laughs> yeah and so like i would come home and like I would be mad that mom, like, mom, I, I just want pizza at school, you know? And then, but then like now, like now that I don't live at home, I'm, I'm missing my mom's, you know, traditional cooking. So it's like kind of fusing these things together. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And it's called Bopo Mofo Cafe. Bopo Mofo. B-O-P-O-M-O-F-O. <laughs> and basically Bopo Mofo, technically it's Bopo Mofo are the first like symbols of like the, the Mandarin alphabet. Mm. Um, oh. They don't teach it anymore. Like now it's like the, now it's like pinion. Like it's uh, okay. it's like the, what you normally see like with like a, it, with Rom Roman, Roman side, ro um, romanticized, ro romanticized or sorry, just like, like letters. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Romanticized letters. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Huh. Bo po mofo. Yeah. It, it doesn't stand for like boba. No, no, it's, it's literally motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Like, that's, that's what we're trying to, that's the, that's like the tongue in cheek. Yeah. Thing, but. <laughs> yeah. So by now we're like, we're like the old man on YouTube. Oh my God. Like, we should have canes and like old white beards and stuff like that. Yeah. How um, are you guys actually like, I'm on, I'm going to flip it on you. How are you? Have any of your guests asked Nico, Jake, how are you guys doing? There's so many, like, you know, cheap VFX these days are so easy to find. Oh, those cheap VFX. You know, there's, uh, <laughs> everyone's doing games, action. How do you guys, how have you guys remained growing and still on top of your game? Oh, man. Wow, I'm actually curious. Go, curious. Go Phil, first, you just took Nico. control of this podcast. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just, just like, wow. Just taking off the jacket. Yeah. The fries are coming <laughs> welcome, out. Welcome That's to. just like hit by a semi-truck yeah. of interview questions. Um, <laughs> We're doing all right. <laughs> we're doing good, man. We're doing good. We're doing, we're doing good. great. We're um, doing great. You know, the funny thing is, like, there's a moment in time we were, we were the 80th most subscribed channel on YouTube. Yeah. Yep. We we hit you, 54. Did you? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we never broke 50. But we broke 54. <laughs> um, I don't think we passed 80. I think we started I think falling. we got to 78. Did we? Yeah. But now you guys have more subscribers than us, so congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. But what are we, like 600th now or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> it's not uh, about the numbers. What have we been talking about this whole time, guys? <laughs> it's we're not going to go. It's like we're like 1,000. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, the funny thing is, like, our views – in some ways are down like we're so small compared to like a lot of the big youtubers yeah. but at the same time there's some other things that like we have like we have this history which lends itself a certain sense of like credibility that mm -hmm. you can't get anywhere else yes um and then even though our views aren't huge the views that we do have like you know you guys watching it's the people that watch us have watched us for a long time and i think we we really appreciate the people that watch us and we try to make content that those people appreciate and in turn i think those people really appreciate it so we have this like we have this audience of people that i think really connect with our material yeah and th these people the people then inspire us to continue making this material and like 
you don't need to have 10 million people watching your stuff. Mm-hmm. As long as you have some people watching your stuff right. that are passionate about it, that drives you as an right. artist. Well, for the record, you do have 10 million people watching certain videos. <laughs> certain videos. Right. That's true. Yeah, we yeah. do have that sometimes. Yes. Right. It's nice to have, it's nice to remind yourself every once in a while that you can make a viral hit. Right. Because I don't think if you, if you can't break a million views once in a while on yeah. YouTube, then you're going to struggle a little right. bit. But, uh, I think the big, the big challenge that we face, and this is kind of where I was going with my question to you also is like, it is a creative industry mm-hmm. and it is, you have to be creative. You have to talk about things that people are passionate about. You have to showcase passion in your work. It's one thing to be passionate about your channel two years into it when the views are blowing up and you're yeah. hitting 80th on your subscriber yeah, yeah, yeah. rank on YouTube. <laughs> it's another thing to be passionate about it 10 years down the line yeah. when you've made all your videos that you kind of had your ideas for. And mm-hmm. now like, what do you have to say to the world? Like, what can yeah. you bring out there? What can you do that's new? And I think that is a struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, there are times when we struggle with it and sometimes you know the solution is just to like make something dumb yeah. and say screw it <laughs> yeah, and yeah, like yeah. not think about it too hard and yeah. there's other times when you think about it really hard and you invest a lot of money into something even if it's not necessarily going to be popular but right. there are business constraints on how often you can do that of course so i would say like for me right now like my passion for like long form like television or movies yeah. has been killed just a little bit mm. and I th- i'm sure that will come back up but it's just it's been so difficult to Who like hurt you who you, Nico? Uh, Let's examine your feelings, yeah, Nico. Yeah, Let's this do this. Is, you, you brought on Phil from Wong Fu, the emotion guy. I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. I think it's more the, like, the challenge of trying to get a big project off the ground. Yeah. Reco- it's like it's like trying to get a business loan for like $10 million. For sure. You need to show a huge amount of like blueprints and prep work and business plans yeah. to do that. Um, and it starts to lose. Like, If you put me in the director's seat with like a normal Hollywood crew yeah you lose a lot of what makes me as a director special oh. you know uh, and i've kind of come to realize that also i've realized that what i thought movies were and maybe what they were in like the 90s when yeah. i was growing up with films is not really what movies are these days oh yeah, yeah. and so like that dream like yeah. even if i could go out and make one of those like that yeah. world doesn't exist anymore i see yeah um and so there's always kind of like catches to that ideal but right. at the same time i am sitting here in my own studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone watching is like, I would trade spots with you in a heartbeat. Right. And I think it's... Grass is always greener. Yeah. It's yeah. more about understanding the evolution of where things have gone in that, yeah, I'll never go out there and make like a, a Terminator 2 or a True mm. Lies style film because those films will never yeah. happen again. Yeah. But I can invent my own way of doing that and I can still go out and make kick-ass action films right. with cool stories. Yep. I just need to not write it like I'm James Cameron going to direct T2. I mm. need to write it like I'm Nico from Corridor Digital yeah. going out to make a, a digital video, not yeah. even necessarily a YouTube video, just a digital piece. Yeah. Um, in understanding that evolution and like learning to kind of like let go of some of the old ways of mm-hmm. doing things, um, I think is where I'm at now like in the process. The thing is like, because there's not just a set way to do things, I don't just have the answer with like, okay, here's how I'm going to do it exactly, now. Exactly, yeah. You have to kind of like slowly work your way into it. Right. But surrounding all this is really fulfilling work with working with everybody in the studio. Right. So even if I'm not making or writing a video, yeah. I'm still helping guide other people make and write videos. Yeah. Uh, and I'm seeing just great content come out of Corridor all the time. Right. And that's super fulfilling. Yeah, I think b- being able to see that you're in, what you do or have built is enabling others and you know, even providing livelihoods, like that's, a, that's, that's something that is definitely rewarding and, definitely. And, and, and knowing that you're enabling new ideas and people that wanted to make stuff like, yeah, I think like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, you, you guys have a Patreon page too. Mm-hmm. We, so we, we started one as well. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a whole other like, like a um, category of work that, that is a, that needs to be attended to. But like, like, have you guys like, wa- like, you know, wanted to make your own indie film? Yes. 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 But like, because like you guys obviously do things on a budget, you mm-hmm. know, and we do too, you know, and but I, and like, I feel like, I feel like your fans would show up. I really do. You know, I do too. It's just, I don't know what it is, but there's something that stops me from mm. doing like a Kickstarter for a film. Oh, yeah. Um, right, right. And I don't know what it is. And I, I'll probably do it at some point, yeah. but I feel like, I just feel like I never have the idea where it's like, this one's the one. All right, everybody, this is the project that we've been mm. working on for years please give us money to make this movie. Like, yeah. I, I don't feel like I've ever quite hit that. And um, that's, that sounds like more of like a personal hurdle though, because you have had ideas that have been on YouTube originals that have mm-hmm. been on Go90. Like you have bigger ideas that you've done. True. Right? 
I think the challenge with that is that like, because we are still kind of connected to the industry, I feel like we could try to make it happen yeah, without yeah. having to rely on everybody I, funding our project. I totally agree with you. Like, especially since you already have Patreon, it's like, hey, can you guys come <laughs> back again? Like, yeah I, yeah, I see what you mean. Like, that's kind of where we're at too, where the next indie film that we make or film or whatever, I, I definitely probably wouldn't crowdfund it. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have <laughs> enough. Yeah, like you said, we're, we're adjacent enough, close enough. And we also have people that have shown, already shown interest in just straight up investing in our in our next film that it would probably just go that way and we would take that just bigger risk off the top, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, I'm, I'm ready and anxious for for the, for the next <laughs> film. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I think, I think what Sam and I realized, we had a discussion about this and I brought it up with everybody else here in the studio since then, is I think the future of longer form narrative storytelling with Corridor lies in us making effectively pilots yeah not necessarily with the intention of being a tv show just straight up mini movies so yep. to speak where it's a contained story and then if somebody wants to like have us make a show out of it great if not not a problem because at the end of the day we're just making it for the people yeah it's out there for the people the end that's that's exactly this is this is why we connect is because that's <laughs> that's literally the strategy that we started implementing um and we we did so last year we made a show called yappy on our channel it's mm -hmm. five it's a five episode um, series, so it's about actually total running time like an hour and a half. Wow! Um, and it it came from me actually going out trying to pitch it as a TV show. Hmm. And I realized first of all I got passes for a variety of reasons. Um, and I was like, okay, I can either shelve this like most writers do; mm -hmm. they'll shelve their idea if it doesn't go, or I can try to like change it to make it more palatable or sellable. But then I was like, wait, we already have fans that are going to watch this. Um, also, even if even if one of these production companies did take this idea, we probably would just make a pilot presentation anyways. Why don't I just go do that? And then I can bring this back out to market or I'll have a finished product that, you know, I can say like, look, this is this is exactly what we were trying to do. And it's less it's easier to pitch, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, we, we made it five episodes and, you know, we had, you know, I think right now, like there's over two and a half million views on the, the series and like that to me is so much is so fulfilling like yes like we were able to actually yeah like give an example of what we wanted to do and and then some you know and and now we're doing it with another thing like so we're investing in like in, in single and like single projects to to show like a bigger idea right mm -hmm. and i think i think you know corridor wong for whatever we, we have the production capabilities that a lot of other channels wish like they don't have that mm -hmm. the fact that you can even do that and make your own pilots is what you know, very, very few channels are able to do. And I think going back to even what you're saying about like how the history and the legacy or whatever of even though like we don't have the views, like that's what that's why people want to work with you guys is because they know that you guys have been able to, to sustain. That's something that they want to hitch their wagon to or be associated with even like when we cast, you know, a new talent or new create like you know some new influencer to be in our stuff like they have way more views than us and i'm like you guys really want to be in our thing you know <laughs> and they're like yeah you guys are wong fu like you know like and we're like whoa like that's that's such a weird thing to hear but it's like i think it's because they know our track record right mm -hmm. and i think that's what you guys you know possess and and, and, and can offer to like a lot of people I, i'm even thinking about like wanting to partner up with other creators to say what are your pilot ideas mm -hmm. and then it becomes like this, we, like now actually we, we truly are a production company where people pitch us their ideas and we go out together or something like that, yeah. you know? And yeah, very few few channels are able to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, yeah, it's just, been a, it's just been a matter of, I think, re-examining the medium that we're working on yeah. uh, since since we started. Because when we, when we started, it was still, you know, short films, or sorry, feature films were, indie feature films was yeah. still, pretty viable yeah. at that point but you know it's just continued to diminish that market has mm -hmm. continued to diminish and so and, and and at the same time we happen to have ourselves in a position where the thing that is going up is digital mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's continued to do that and i mean people don't even use that word anymore yeah, people yeah. aren't even <laughs> like remember new digital? media yeah, yeah. New yeah. media like that's, I mean, that's not, where the digital and corridor digital comes from yeah, yeah. <laughs> was, instead of corridor films it's like oh we shoot them with digital cameras so maybe instead of corridor productions or films it's corridor digital <laughs> right nice. but that's so that, the the distinction of that is even going away at this point yeah. it's becoming so prevalent and so now it's just a matter of like hey we've got uh x amount of subscribers we get x amount of regular views each month like how can we make all this work towards new 
ideas that push us creatively Mm -hmm. and you know who knows like sam wrote a book yeah we're releasing that um you know trying pilots of different concepts and seeing which ones pop like that's all fun that's all fair game right now you know what you're missing though a boba shop yeah yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) you guys need to (laughs) open up a brick and mortar (laughs) apparel store or airsoft uh you know facility (laughs) actually guys what if you guys could open up a brick and mortar business Mm. what would that be be? distillery a distillery (laughs) which like of what uh, like white whiskey. White whiskey. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then we'd we'd barrel it, and oh, you know, we'd have we'd have all kinds. I, you've thought this out. I have. <laughs> I think. I, have. I think that's going to be something you got to do. <laughs> I, well, unfortunately, I can't speak too much about it because uh, oh shit, distilling You're alcohol a- without a permit is illegal. Oh, um, well, we're talking about it, but we're talking about it in hypothetical. Hypothetically, so if there was a, a, vid- a film about Jake distilling alcohol theoretically oh, yeah. and he's already done it what would it be like <laughs> it would be we distill the alcohol we drink it and then we try to build a warehouse oh, around man. it <laughs> well after having consumed the alcohol that would I be. see this I honestly see this in your future if I can go so milk tea I, you can sell you can make this decision Sam happen. and I are actually pretty keen on this idea dude. like long term we wow. want to try it all right Hmm. All right, I'm 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 ready to go to your grand opening. Sweet, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Nico's like, what? No, no, no. <laughs> Corridor first. <laughs> Corridor first. That's only on the weekends. <laughs> only on the weekends. Well, you were saying this in the uh, thing I was listening to uh, that I brought up before the yeah. podcast, and that's you were saying some things are okay to just leave as hobbies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Some things. Right. Oh, that, was that in the graduation speech? Uh, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And sounds and, like kind of a downer piece of advice. <laughs> 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 no, I, I think so. The reason why I said that is, um, I said this at the gr- a graduation speech. So I, I gave the uh, commencement speech at UC San Diego in 2016. How did that feel? Terrifying. <laughs> so I've done a lot of public speaking, but it's always I know the audience. Like they're they're here to see me or whatever right. or Wang Fu. That was the first time where it's like there's people that have no idea who I am. They don't give a shit about. It. They they just want to see their kid go up and get their diploma. Uh, so I was so nervous. There's five thousand people. Ooh. Like it's it was in, it was intense. Um, which is not that big if you think about how many people watch your videos. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is actually a testament to be like that's how many people are watching our videos, yeah. right? So all of ours, yeah. Um, but I think one thing: the longer I do this too, and and obviously you know, coming across so many people that try to do what we're doing too, I I, I have recognized that there's a lot of people because of a variety of reasons: financial, fam- familial. Um, maybe even like going even up how they were raised there they will never sorry never is the wrong word it will be extremely hard for them to make the jump to fully pursue their passion to f- chase their dreams and you just like I don't like actually I don't like the advice actually of saying hey go pursue your passion otherwise what are you doing with your life you know like because right. some people just don't have the capability to do that right mm-hmm. so I don't want I, I the, the point of the speech because most graduation speeches are always like chase your dreams you can do it no matter what but it's like some people are like no I, I have to pay off my student loans first you know like that's that's what a lot of people don't think about so I didn't want to make a speech that was like guilting people to not know their passion or like why aren't you doing your dream right now like all these people especially at UC San Diego are going into like bio or science <laughs> or something that is very stem related right so it's like I don't I feel like arts and creative arts are always like you know glorified as like oh yeah. like those are the people I'm like one time I had someone that was like, dude, what you're doing is so amazing. And this guy was a neurosurgeon. Right. And I'm like, I don't do shit. You have n- like nerves in your <laughs> hands. Yeah. You're saving someone's life, right? So there's definitely like this image of like, oh, wow, like you pursue your dreams. You're in the creative arts. That's so cool. And I'm like, I, I don't want to make people feel lesser if they chose not to do that. And that there still is a lot of pride in, in having like, you know, an honest living. And so for those people, I would still say, hey, being creative, Having having some type of um, uh, uh, energy or um, specific interest is still very important to just I think mental health and having a fulfilling life. Yeah. So yes, keep those a hobby, you know, or like don't a lot. I feel like a lot of people as they get older, they they just fall into like you know their their routine of I just work, I come home, I watch TV, I eat, and I go to sleep, right? Yeah. And I'm like, hey, remember when you were a kid, a teenager, or in college? Right now, you guys about to graduate. You like to, to do this. You like to dance. You like to play music. Don't forget about that as you get older. So that's mm-hmm. that's kind of what I'm saying. Like it's it's really about like, look, you're not gonna you're not gonna drop out of school and go be a drummer. That's not gonna ha- that's not on your cards. Right. But you can still be a drummer for your, 
you know, local church, or you can, you know, help your kids out someday with their, with their band or something. You know, like there's, there's things that you can still keep that alive. I yeah. guess. Yeah. <clears throat> that's super important for, yeah. I think that's not often spoken of enough. Like this, this whole thing of, uh, like the people that aren't just making it in the creative arts because right. they uh, threw away everything else in their yeah. life to go pursue it or what have yeah. you. Those people make way more of a difference on the day to day than, than any, almost anybody in the yeah, creative yeah, arts. Yeah. I mean, we give people entertainment and joy, <laughs> sure. Yeah. But like, you know, when somebody's sick or when somebody yeah. needs real help, yeah, yeah. like, you know, that's you need a, a whole, physical person there. Yeah, yeah. That's a whole different level. Right. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like that's the, the people watching, like if they're, you know, I, I'm sure they're all fans of you guys and like, it's so cool. It's like, I just want people to like have pride in what they're, or also realize that they still have a, purpose and that they're not just living life passively like oh, i'm mm -hmm. just here to like watch other people like you can make an impact at home you know like in your own small community you know like don't 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 take a pass or don't take a back seat and say like well i didn't i i couldn't do it you know so i'm just not even going to try like you should still try you know in some to some capacity right? yeah and that yeah. the mental health that that gives you the fabric that it gives you in the community yeah. that you're in all that stuff is extremely important right right yeah. right and arguably like physically interacting with people has such a bigger impact than just like paying at lip service in a video. Exactly. It's one thing to say something. It's another thing to actually take action. Right. Help right. Somebody. Right. So with that said, move out to LA, <laughs> take action and apply for a court or digital. <laughs> but that, was, that already passed. We already fitted oh, okay. right. <laughs> applicants. Yeah. We, we got, got a, a guy coming in today. Yeah. At two. Actually, Nico, what, I'm so curious. What would you open? What would be a business that you would open? Mm, maybe a school. A school, yeah, like not like a high school, yeah. like, like a film school or. Something. Oh, the, okay. Actually, whenever I, I sometimes, <laughs> I will watch your guys's like cinema tips or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> how are they doing things? And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Actually, I got a bone to pick with you guys. Uh oh. <laughs> um, we saw a BTS of you guys shooting in the woods or something, uh -huh. and um, and apparently, yeah, someone uh, on your team thinks that we have shitty audio at Wang Fu. Oh really? Yeah. I know. I, I I did a little research <laughs> on this. <laughs> you remember which video it is? <laughs> it was when we were filming Foam Fortnite. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and there's an audio problem or something. Yeah. And they're like, oh, let's just do this or whatever. And like, oh, that was I, not I Arthur forget. that made that comment. Yeah. There probably was, was Arthur. Arthur. Where's yeah. Arthur? <laughs> <laughs> he's probably in like India or some yeah, other like. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's not here right now. Yeah, yeah. He's afraid to show his face. <laughs> Come on, Arthur. Let's talk audio. <laughs> Stop filming with like Inaritu and Leonardo DiCaprio and get over here. And <laughs> yeah. See that's what's giving him the you know the place to say that our audio <laughs> so, yeah you're working with actual you know boom operators and sound mixers <laughs> give us a break man <laughs> you know there's a, there's a story i think is that'd be great to tell on this podcast um because i think i think more people need to hear it if they are fans of corridor which is way back in the day like 2010 like in february this is how like old that. we are where i'm like is eight years ago back in the day to some people it is i'm like nine. it's just eight years nine oh shit. okay <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that hurt okay yeah all right um, yes yes we went to so sarah evershed who is joe penna's wife she wasn't his wife at the time mm. um she's just getting into like managing youtubers back then uh i think it was called big cloud at the time or something like oh, that. Frame. Big, big no, frame no 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 before, before big that, frame before big frame yeah i think was, i think that's was it big cloud or like i forget something like that big frame was different. Yeah. 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 yeah big frame was after cloud something um she was doing an event for Olga K, who had just finished like a circus themed video that she was like premiering. <laughs> it was just a regular YouTube video, more yeah. or less. But they had a party for it. Um, and I ended up going. I'm just some scrub, like fresh from Wisconsin, well, fresh from school in Wisconsin, but yeah. you know, from Minnesota. Moved out to LA like maybe a year before. Um, and we had just dropped Frozen Crossing like a few weeks before that. Mm. And so we have one video on the internet. Dude, <laughs> but that, that one video though. <laughs> it wasn't even on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, so we're at this party, like surrounded by legit people like making things happen on YouTube. And YouTube's not even like a big thing yet. Yeah. You know, like big is like 100,000 subscribers at this point. Yeah. And you and the rest of the Wong Fu guys are there and you're like, hey, you're the guy that made Frozen Crossing. <laughs> I was like, oh, 
<laughs> it's like this guy who's making it happen on YouTube, who's totally legit, and yeah. like all the other people here, like he knows what I made. Yeah. And he knows I made this video, and I haven't done anything <laughs> beyond this video. And you're like, yeah, Frozen Crossing was great. Keep it up. I probably was actually nervous to talk to you because I was like, oh shit, I'm just like this weird Asian kid here. <laughs> oh, who's this? Like this guy looks. This guy looks like you know he made this action movie. You know, he's probably gonna be like too cool for me. Yeah, <laughs> and we make just cheesy romantic stuff. <laughs> and here we are, nine years later. Yeah, we both stuck with it, dude. That I mean, that video showed that you guys had something different from like that was that was a that was is it's actually do you watch that and do you cringe at some of the, the moments or um, is it, has it held up in your eyes frozen crossing ones more or less hold up there's definitely a little bit of cringe frozen crossing two is like cringe city <laughs> the follow-up is just like it's way too much cringe because like it's way too la like oh. we had a lot of like la people helping us with the second one and like it just becomes like what's too la like you mean the like the production or the the acting's all sticky and like uh. the uh <laughs> The production kind of gets like it's it's the heavy cameras on tripods filming oh, in a warehouse right. versus like out in like the snowy woods of yeah, Minnesota with real. like little camcorders. Yeah. You know? So you basically you're saying that the Midwest has better you know actors and, and crew in town. Is what <laughs> well, you're Jake saying. was one of the yeah, guys. Yeah, it was the guy in the mask. Oh my god, that's right. <laughs> you're in the yeah. thumbnail. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's Man, amazing. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, the other thing too is like if you watch any like Hollywood like straight to DVD action pieces, oh, usually yeah. just like shot of somebody shooting yeah, yeah, yeah. cuts the shot of somebody getting shot cut yeah. the shot of somebody shooting and that's that's what the majority of frozen crossing 2 is yeah, however there's the one scene in the middle the yeah. breach scene and i'm really pr proud all of that right scene. we got we should all go you should, we should do a react video <laughs> but i have a story actually real quick i don't know how we're doing on time but um for the wong fu fans at least that might be watching this there's mm. a there's a a short film a medium film that we medium like to call film. it at the time because at the time in 2010 40 minutes was long like no one was making 40 minute videos narrative mm -hmm. we made a thing called agents of secret stuff ah uh, yes ass ass <laughs> with uh with niga higa ryan higa who's still going also and we shot it we shot some of it like right here like as mm -hmm. i was walking i was like oh this is the interrogation room <laughs> And I was doing research for that, yeah. and I pulled it up, not knowing that it was shot here. Right, and you're like, <laughs> wait. I was like, wait a minute. I recognize <laughs> that loading dock anywhere, dude. I, I mean, a lot of people don't know, but like, cause yeah, we had never done action before. That was our first action thing e ever, and we're like, okay, we have to have gun choreography, we have to have fight scenes, and um, and we. We called Freddy first. <laughs> and then, what? <laughs> no, but Freddy, but Freddy, because yeah, yeah, you had just moved here, and like you, you linked, uh, he linked us up, and you came like to do all the karate, like do all the action, like you know, um, I don't even know the proper terminology for what your position was, but you were overseeing like all the action shots, action designer, action designer, coordinator, all this stuff, and then even when we were editing, you came into like. Uh, help us with the editing <laughs> like you came to our that was our first office ever ah. um out in pasadena and uh yeah so like nico quarter digital has a very deep history and then we we shot a bunch of stuff like in this area too like, like that was such a like, cool time i feel like w w it was like the first time that we met creators that weren't just personalities mm -hmm. but that knew how to shoot too and that we were learning from like i never like i went to ucsd it was a film pro like art program but i never went to film school so like there's there's so much technical stuff that i had i'm st still don't really know but like learning from you guys was like i was like watching like oh this is film school like i was like i was like <laughs> learning stuff i was learning stuff so agents of secret stuff wouldn't have happened without without quarter digital so. yeah yeah i don't think you guys even had a channel at that time yet huh maybe you just started i think we were just starting by yeah. that time because we launched corridor i think when frozen crossing 2 came out Wait, so what you said you had already moved to LA for a year. What were you doing for a year before? We were doing posts on uh, a oh, kind of a crappy monster movie. The bear one, right? No, no. Uh, oh. The bear one is the one Freddie made. Oh, okay. Um, Dark Island. Dark Island. Where can we find Dark Island? It's previously <laughs> called Infected. You can find Dark Island on Amazon. Wait, actually. it's still there. I think so. Dude, yeah. we should have a watch party. There's you can, rays Dude. We should. <laughs> it, do you have one here? Is it like? Is it? Is it like? Oh, we framed? have it ripped. We have it ripped. Oh, we, have, we, have, we have a. We have a poster in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. If you go upstairs, yeah. the, there's a poster up there. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to yeah. check it out from humble beginnings. You know, yeah, you have to. You have to let beginnings. people know. Yeah. And I would like to say that the, what is it, the wraiths <laughs> or whatever from Harry Potter, like the black smoky things that fly in. Yeah. Totally ripped off our uh, monster design oh. from Dark Island. <laughs> <laughs> we did it first. You should, you should write a letter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dear J.K. Rowling, yeah. screw you. Yeah. I'm sure she'll see that. I'm yeah. sure she'll see it. I'm sure it'll affect her emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but I'm I'm glad that we're still going. I'm glad that you guys are still going. And I'm uh, I'm very honored to be on this podcast. We're honored to host you. Yeah, we're yeah. honored that you came should, should we start a podcast? Should Wong Fu start a podcast? I, I'm just, I don't know if I have the capacity. No, you to have do a that. you have a freaking boba shop yeah. you gotta run, man. You're not gonna have time for. A I podcast. mean, yeah, you're oh you're God. equivalent. Your your equivalent that's of true. our podcast is your boba shop. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, do, I do have one final question I'd like to ask. Sure. You hopefully, hopefully it's not a downer question. No, because it might be. Um, but I think it's pertinent because here at Corridor, you know, it's. Corridor basically has started as a partnership between me, Jake, and Sam. Mm. Um, and you had two um, partners when you started out too. This is the Ted exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and Ted has moved on from yeah. Wong Fu. He moved on like four years ago. Four, yeah, years oh, ago? Uh, several years ago. Yeah, he moved to yeah. New York. Yeah, with his wife. Yeah. How, would, like, splitting up with a partner? You know, I imagine it can't be easy. Mm-hmm. And I have no idea where you'd even begin, like, navigating your way through something right. like that. Was it? Was it a, a thing that you guys were like it felt all right? And you, I, how did that how did that play out? Yeah. How did you how did you navigate through a process like that? And Jake, I'm not asking because I want to leave the order. <laughs> 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 like, is Sam <laughs> listening to this? He's just so exactly. So how do you? Yeah. Wait, say that part again. Let me take a note. What was that <laughs> lawyer? <bit? laughs> um, so okay, there's a couple things here, and yeah, I actually haven't talked about this you know publicly with a lot of people, so mm. I, I appreciate the question actually. Um, Luckily, you know, things weren't that messy just because our paperwork from the beginning was so bare bones because it's this whole thing started so um, organically and like, hey, we should do this. Oh, we have to file this. Okay, yeah, let's go do this. Oh, we have to open an account. Okay, let's go do that. You know, so it was never like this, like sit down. All right, share, shares, whatever, equity, whatever. It was just very natural. So some would argue that because of that, that actually makes things more complicated like later. (laughs) But I think. Ultimately, um, we value our friendship or just want to be like not assholes to each other that mm-hmm. we're like not going to be too, uh, you know, too precious or too angry at anything. Like we, we, the writing was kind of on the wall. Like we knew that Ted had already been living out there and going back and forth for a few years. And, you know, he was already trying to like take a backseat to certain things. And um, yeah, it was, it wasn't like a surprise. And we just kind of, wanted the first thing is like look in in our grand scheme of our life like let's not make this one moment that is actually going to be like a sliver of time like too detrimental so let's just get it done get it done and over with and like let's figure out like where we need to sign let's do whatever distributions and mm-hmm. like let's just get it over with um so luckily you know it was actually okay um in terms of like the technical stuff but in terms of like you know emotionally um i think you know, when you first start, yeah, you, you're never thinking about like when it's going like, you know, when things are going to like separate or when things are going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, you obviously want to have like the best, you know, hopes and dreams and everything. And but yeah, I think as you grow older, as long as you're open to understanding that we are all individual humans and that we're not trying to hurt each other and that it's just like this is just how my life developed so that I have this new interest or mm-hmm. that I that I have less invested in this in this side of like my life or project um i think like it's okay so it really comes down to like communication and honesty um and and being willing to for me also being willing to like really be pragmatic about things and like being okay to say hey like yeah that that hurts my feelings but like it does make sense you know and Mm -hmm. when we're able to communicate that where whenever when if i was able to like think about you know the situation that way like it, it, it definitely made things um uh flow better i'm not gonna say that it wasn't like oh like this sucks or it's this is too bad but i think the great thing is that ultimately um you know there is no animosity and the fans are still supportive you know and and it actually has allowed us to expand and and create new opportunities for others so um there was actually like a, a period of time that you know yeah, our identity as Phil West Ted, the three guys of Wong Fu Productions, um, I actually think started to be a detriment where we were too protect, too protective, or I was actually too protective of, we have to maintain this image of the three of us. Mm-hmm. And so it made my expectations of like, hey, you, you know, we should, we should have all been at that, that one event or you, why, why didn't we, you know, come off this way in this one video or whatever. And, and even to like our interns or our new staff, like, 
you know, I wasn't listening to their ideas because I was like, no, no it's it's about the three of us first. Mm -hmm. And so now looking back, I'm like, oh, or now looking at what it is now where there's contributions from everyone and, and we're all working together and we're all hearing different voices. Like to me, that's so much better than preserve this image of only the three of us, you know, and like, yeah. and we're the boss, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I actually really appreciate that, um, you know, we've been able to, uh, you know, grow actually since you know ted uh stepped away and um yeah it's actually been really really good you know and, and healthy for us hmm. yeah i don't know like I, I think every channel uh you know is going to go through different changes whether it's you know even like just like how much mental bandwidth you know we can give and it's also just like we're just getting older like eventually i'm going to have a child <laughs> i want i want to have a family and i i I don't want to have that much responsibility. It's not even about like, <laughs> it's not even about like, you know, like arguing about like, I, I'm trying to preserve, like I need this responsibility. Don't take my job away from me. It's like, no, please, please, someone take this <laughs> you know, responsibility from me, you know? So um, it's been good. And, and the team that we have now, we've been training and preparing them for a point where they can take on a new responsibility like this. So for the first time, they, just two days ago, they wrapped. Um, we shot a new series, seven part series. Same thing is going to be about total running time, maybe like hour 45, wow. seven part series. I wasn't involved. Oh really? Yeah. I was just executive producer. They, I helped on story and I gave writing notes, like the script notes, but we found, um, Taylor was one of the writers and we found another writer, um, from outside. They wrote it together. Um, our in-house AD, our in-house production coordinator, in-house editor, uh, cinematographer, they all did it themselves. Mm -hmm. And we've been preparing for that because we did, you know, Yappy last year where, like, you know, they were the, the they took on the grunt of the, uh, the work for an extended period of time and I was still directing. But now it's like, okay, I've seen that you guys can handle this. And so they, f they, they finished and it's going to be great. And I'm, and I showed up to set like four hours late and I was like, <laughs> you guys need anything? And they're like, nope. And I was mm. like, cool, I'll go get some chicken nuggets for you guys or something. <laughs> I don't know. Like, and I think that's, 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 that's the beauty of, of that's, that's, I think, what, you know, I want us to become. Like, I don't think I should be the only voice for Wang Fu forever mm. anyways. You know, like, um, and I'm excited for, for that. You know, I, I joke with them. I'm like, hey, something like, I'm going to Willy Wonka this and like, you know, <laughs> like, I'm going to take that glass elevator or something, you know. Like, um, but yeah, I'm really proud of them. Yeah. Cool. Huh. Wow. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure like, I don't know, like, I, we'll, we, we'll talk about that later. But like, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like, you know, you're, you guys are creating that same culture here too, of like really talented people um, that are fully capable of taking on more and more as, as it's already obvious, you know, like, mm -hmm. so, I mean, we, we, we watch you guys and you're like, dude, like your corridor crew is, is amazing, you know, so props to you guys too. Yeah. Everybody here on the team is very essential to making what we make. For it's, sure. It's not just one of us going out there and like making it happen. Yeah. It's, definitely yeah, yeah. A, a team it's the Nico show. We get it. <laughs> this podcast, just Nico wanted to be like, look, I have the most to say. I'm the most important. I it's get like a it. big, just painting of my yeah. face. That would be exactly. on the wall. Kind of like a, I just watched Korean Bohemian style. Rhapsody. So I told her, yeah, you, you got the Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Just shave, <laughs> shave off this part and you'll just have the Freddie Mercury mustache. Yeah. You see, it's the mustache authority is what <laughs> yeah. really like determines like who's yeah. yeah. mustache yeah. authority. <laughs> yeah. Mustache. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. You guys need to make a video about just like a like a mustache that gets Dude, out of what the is it about mustaches that give you authority because they do give you authority. I like, mean, a lot of cops have them. That's the richer your mustache. Also, the other thing is is actually per like military hair co hair code, facial hair code. Okay, history lesson. Here we go. If you're not an NCO, uh, you can't have oh. you can't have facial hair unless it's a mustache. That's oh. that's right here. So you can have a mustache. So you can have facial hair, but it's a, and this is different branches of military have different <laughs> rules but like the main rule wow. is like you can have a mustache and that's it how did the mustache stick around was it just because it was trendy at the time when like world war ii happened or was it like <laughs> wait no, because that was the first back. that was the first mustache ever no no yeah. no i mean this they went way back, back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mustaches have been trendy for centuries well <laughs> i mean we I, had one in confucian times so <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i i'll say this like i don't know what it is in my my own Jeans, but I can't grow facial hair on the side of my face. This oh, is, what this the is heck? all cut at the same time. Oh, okay, yeah, right. What? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a natural goatee. Dude, it is. Yeah, you, it is. You it's crazy. <laughs> and so maybe it's that like more people could grow mustaches, so more people wore them. Or maybe it's just because we associate it with cops and like the military. I, I wonder knows? if it's like because like maybe some people 
they can't control if they go bald or not, but they can control this. So like mm. maybe that's like they're trying to find that balance. Also, maybe there's that too. Maybe or maybe it's just people are lazy and and it, if or actually like the less you cut your hair, that actually showed more wealth because you didn't. No, that doesn't make sense. Either. No. <laughs> <laughs> I we just know. say things. Yeah. Uh, who did, yeah. There's got to be a Vox video about this. <laughs> <It's definitely, laughs> you know? Yeah. I, that's actually I watch a lot of Vox. Or like, <laughs> I, I actually have realized that I'm, the channels I'm watching now are like like educational historical documentaries mm. or whatever like or like the channels that ask like weird questions like how many people could fit in the grand canyon you know like <laughs> or how like what is dark matter like that's the stuff i'm watching mm. now i'm like yeah i'm so not a normal youtube audience <laughs> anymore that's, that's the know? stuff i go for yeah exactly well. yeah what's what's the stat that like one out of two people on youtube are there to learn something or something like oh, yeah wow, that makes yeah, sense it's yeah. uh i think it's even greater than that yeah i just i just had to you know uh, google or youtube the uh, same thing like uh something about like installing a new fluorescent ballast or something I was like, I needed to look it up. <laughs> so it's like, that, I think it literally is like people just not knowing things and sharing things. Yeah, we were going to start a series called How to YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Oh, I just actually learned, a, I actually searched how to make a cornhole uh, game. Oh. Because I want one at, uh, at our cafe. Oh. We have a patio. And I was debating. I'm like, dude, it's just a board with a hole. I can make this. I don't need to buy this because like they're like a hundred some bucks. Yeah, don't and, waste your money. But I, but I did. You I did, bought yeah, it. I, did. I, don't, I don't have, dude. There are so many videos. I, I, I gave like five a try. They're like simplest way, easiest cornhole, whatever. And it still required like huge tools and like guys like doing like special type cuts or special type drills to hide, you know, bolts. I'm like, what is this? Just cut a hole in a forty five degree angle yeah, in setting. These, like miter cuts and things. I'm yeah, like, this is not saw. a normal thing. <laughs> I really thought it would just be like nail gun, nail gun, nail gun, nail gun, done. But <laughs> it's, it's actually a pretty complicated situation over there. So, well, the, hit me up next time. I, I, I just I'm making a guillotine right now. So, oh my god, just hit me up yeah. next time you need a new set. Do you have? I'd be happy to make them. That'd be amazing custom for for the boba shop. Well, I don't know. The, the, I ended up buying one for unfinished, so it's so we're gonna paint it, but it's unfinished for like seventy bucks. Okay, that's, that's pretty. That's bad. pretty good. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. I I wouldn't want to pay you less than that, anyways. Right. Well, you know? I wouldn't so, do. It. I would just do it for the honor of having. Oh, okay, my, I, my you, work you can sign in it. your yeah, shop. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Next next round. Next. Round. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Man. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Bill, for for joining us. Yeah, I um. It's nice to have a big catch up conversation. Oh yeah, I, this shouldn't be. We shouldn't have to wait for these, but it sounds like <laughs> it is. The last time we like we had a beer somewhere where but i think that was also because of like work or something really yeah. but yeah we should just uh we should just hang out we're just we're down the street <laughs> i'm like right here come to our boba shop what it, would you guys be down to do like a workshop on like like maybe start your like do like a little lecture on filmmaking vfx at the boba shop at the boba shop yeah, so i'd be down 100%. one of my one of my goals with the boba shop is to not just obviously like yeah so boba but like i wanted to like be like almost like a resource like where you know young kids um, and that area is like an Asian enclave. So like, there's a lot of kids that are growing up in families where it's like, you're not allowed to do anything creative, right? Like kind of like I was, but like to know that they can have a destination where they can like learn things about, you know, the creative arts too. So maybe we can have like a guest speaker of, of Nico. That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. I'd be down. I'd love to do that. Dude. And we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll set that up. <laughs> it'll be your it'll, it'll be your first uh, trial of uh, of like that curriculum. You, you already have that. <laughs> I feel like you've already like played this out. You already have like uh, where yes. you would start. Yes, I have an idea of where I would start. Oh my god, I'm excited! <laughs> All right, master. Oh my god, you guys need to do a parody or like a version of master class. You know, like those videos. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of like, like this is Nico advertising on Instagram. Yeah, they were going <laughs> so hard for like yeah. a long time, but like because they have other writers and cinematographers and like super famous directors. Nico's master class. There you go. It's I paid, just all really bad advice, but well presented. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I paid, I paid nine, $99 for that. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, I had a good time. Is there anything you want uh, want people listening to check out? Um, I mean, if they're curious about uh, our channel and like our like, if you want to if you want to see Corridor Digital with romantic um, storylines and a few more Asian people, then check out Wong Fu Productions because that's, that's apparently like you know what we are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically everything you don't like about uh, Corridor oh, Digital. Psh. Oh, psh. I'm ready for I'm ready for the Corridor romantic comedy, guys. It's coming. Yeah. I think you guys actually make it like and still have your flavor in it. Like there's. I'm gonna pitch you some ideas okay. for for Valentine's Day next year or All something. Right. Done. Yeah, uh, like, like a romantic VFX action <laughs> short. It's gonna be amazing. You guys do have you guys do have romance in your short or your stuff though too. Like, 
like Master Chief doesn't want to die. Yeah, or like <laughs> you're a <laughs> romantic comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have you have you know you have like the you know, the knight in shining armor, and you know you have a uh, emotional tension. You know, I've I've seen Lifeline. You know, <laughs> <laughs> wait, have you watched all of Lifeline? I have seen. Okay. Hey, well, thanks so much, guys, <laughs> for being here. I don't. It's fine. Just one episode's all. It's okay. okay. Hey, how much of Single by Thirty did you watch, bro? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming on the show, Phil. <laughs> this <laughs> is this it. is a YouTube. We can, another episode of a YouTube bread talk. We should have a conversation about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, I mean that that's the answer for any YouTube bread yeah. show. Because the reality is, like the actual episodes on YouTube bread get like fifty thousand views. Oh my! Oh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, maybe a little bit more yeah, now. Yeah, it's it's tough. Well, because they weren't. Put, that's a whole other. They renewed minefield season three they did that one probably got good views but i remember when they did well remember that uh like logan paul high school hunger games video movie no. sorry thinning. Thinning. Oh, video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the thinning which is also stephen king book yeah um <laughs> did it when that came out so you could still actually they didn't show the views on youtube but you could yeah. access the views by using like one of the other like apis that's oh. the info and so sam's like i wonder how many views are actually getting on this movie it had like eighty thousand. no way <laughs> yeah even with the free trial well, that was before the free trial. Oh, okay. So they probably did the free trial afterwards because well, they're like, wow, this only has like 80,000 views. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it was it was what it was. So maybe that's why. Yeah. Single Y30, we did okay. We did okay with ours. I'm glad. But uh, same thing, didn't get didn't get the renewal, but it's all right. Yeah. We should have done a, a, apparently a Karate Kid remake. Apparently that's that's like their yeah. – that's their uh, – that's the dog and pony show right now. Fame. Yeah. Who would have thought that hiring a bunch of old TV executives to try to relaunch TV on YouTube would result <laughs> in something different old than old TV? TV? Oh, <laughs> damn. The shade. <laughs> the shade. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks for being on. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Awesome. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. A big thanks to Phil for coming out and joining us here in the Corridor Cast. Go check out their YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Productions. And once again, just a little gentle reminder for all of you guys interested in the Corridor Digital Geometric T-shirt and the Corridor Digital Iridescent Hoodie, which is a wonderful hoodie. I've been wearing it every day and I need to wash it. <laughs> CorridorDigital.store. Today is the last day. So get on over there if you're thinking about it. You will not regret it because we have been really making some pretty good strides in the quality of our merch this year. That it is, it's been pretty good stuff. Uh, Heck, I'm wearing some merch right now. I'm just surrounded by merch. It's all I have in my, <laughs> it's all I have in my closet these days. Um, but hey, I'm styling. And you can be too. <laughs> all right. Thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, if you're watching on the YouTube channel and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. And if you want to find us elsewhere, like on Spotify and iTunes and all that kind of stuff, we are there. So you can find us there. It's so convenient in this modern age of technology. All right. Thank you. See you at the next one.